What did we have yesterday was a classic mean reversion day. Um, and so what we do when the market is down big in the morning, just to refresh your memory in case you were not part of this call yesterday, there's no panic. We don't sell when the market's imploding in the first two hours. We force ourselves to wait, see what the two hour low is. By 1130, we expect mean reversion higher. OK, and if that happens, then we can manage our positions. We can, like I did yesterday, clean up the portfolio a bit, take some positions out, raise some cash because I don't like how this market's behaving. So I wanted to raise cash, but we don't do it in the panic in the morning when things are imploding. We do it more methodically because statistically speaking, after exhaustive research, selling in the first two hours uh, of the morning is um absolutely detrimental to returns over a long period of time. Okay. So that's exactly how it played out yesterday. We're not surprised. Now there'll be a day in here where the market gaps down and implodes. It'll happen. It'll happen. There'll be one terrible day, but statistically speaking over a long period of time, it's, it's a terrible decision to sell when the market opens down 1%, like it's going to open down 1% right now. All right, so how do we trade from here? I'm looking for mean reversion again until that stops working. It doesn't mean I have to put a trade on, but market's going to go test the lows. Okay, we're looking, um, I guess, 4, 410, 411 on SPY. It's, that's going to test the put wall, okay? And typically the best trades come off of the put wall. You go down to the put wall. Sometimes you go below it. And then it reverses back up and you get a rip higher. The reason is what options traders called Vanna charm flows. What happens is put owners, when they see this collapse in the morning, they're quick to book profits. So they start selling their puts to book a profit, which forces the dealers who are buying the puts to buy the underlying. And that drives the indexes higher. And that's why we get that mean reversion trade so often. Now, like I said, it doesn't always happen that way. So we don't just buy the market because it's down. We have to see that, that reversal occur. And if it does, then we'll put some trades on. If it doesn't, and the market just craters all day, well, we'll be lifting more positions out of the portfolio. But we come in today with a cash position in every, index, um, every armor portfolio, armor index only, armor uh, swing, armor invest. They all have cash. Okay, so we've started to prepare <clears throat> for a risk monitor change. Risk monitor hasn't changed yet. But should the NASDAQ close down where it's trading right now at the open, which is down 1%, that's probably going to take us out of the NASDAQ in the index only portfolio. And when the, the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P, one or the other, or both for sure, comes out of that portfolio, those are our two main driving forces of the seven indexes we follow. Call it eight if we say we're following the ARK funds as well. Okay. So if we get stopped out of that major index, it's going to change that risk monitor. And it's going to force us to start raising more cash and be more defensive. Now we had a great day yesterday. We really, you know, even though we, we were down a little bit, we totally outperformed the market in a significant way. And we've been doing that for the last couple of weeks. Um, but if they come after this whole market, guys, you better believe they're going to come after silver. Okay. They're going to come after silver. They're going to come after the mining stocks. They're going to come after everything. So we'll see our net worth go down. We'll be raising cash everywhere, protecting capital as fast as we can. Um, we would expect the precious metal stocks to perform the best. Cause I think that the initial selling will be knee jerk. Cause like everything gets dumped at once. And then there's, you know, the, the cream rises to the top. Our portfolio that I've been trying to build for us is lower beta. It's a lower beta portfolio, Coke, McDonald's, AT&T, Verizon, you know, or not Verizon that we sold, but AT&T, the, the pipelines, um, Chevron, uh, DuPont. I mean, uh, CVS, these are lower beta names. So if the market starts to really sell off, we might lose some money, but it should be a dramatically less than what the market's doing. We'll see what happens. That's the theory, at least.
let's say the market stops right here, reverses, starts to go up. Totally possible. In fact, let's take a look at um, the, uh, the S&P real quick. Look at Wheaton Precious Metals. What a great close that was yesterday on Wheaton. The metals looked great into the close. All right. So look, the S&P is right on this uptrend line and the 50 day moving average. I mean, you could argue. You know, we could we could pull this out right to there because it's kind of the 50 day moving average is where it's holding. OK, so what I submit to you is it could come down here, hold, reverse, set up a whole new buying opportunity. If it does. If it does. I'm really leaning now because we got cash in the portfolio. So what do we do with it? On the one hand, we can just hold cash because the market's becoming more and more difficult to 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 invest in. Avoided some unreal collapses across the market. Basically, because we use stop loss discipline, right? The armor investing way we build our whiteboard. Use algorithms for risk management and entry points. And then we just use stop losses to protect ourselves from ourselves. The, the, the Achilles heel of using just one of these three stages, let's say just your whiteboard. If your whiteboard's no good, you're going to get killed, right? And sometimes my whiteboard's going to be off, just like yours is, right? So for a while there, my whiteboard was stuffed full of innovator names. It's stage three that protected us. And right now, my top shelf, which I call pop the water bottle, fundamental ideas, I, I'm changing my thought process. I have to rebuild the list. Okay. I got to rebuild it. It, it. it was full of all my favorite innovator names. And while I still love them, this is the wrong market for those names. So I got to rethink what is the top shelf. It feels like commodities are top shelf, steel, silver, copper, all of those things. Um, it feels like low beta names are the top shelf. I mean, industrial. So I got to really think about, you know, how I, how I want to move forward. And this brings me to my next point. If we decide to put cash back to work and don't forget the armor portfolios are a representation of how I run my own money, right? So I've got cash in my swing portfolio and my invest portfolio. What am I going to do with the cash? There are some markets where it's best to own the indexes with a portion of your portfolio. And I feel like this is the kind of market for that. It reduces volatility, gets rid of single stock risk, but we can still have growth stock type of returns on the upside if we buy them right by using the ETFs that are twice the performance of the underlying SSO and QLD. And so I'm really thinking about if this market holds up, okay, we're getting a test, we're getting a sell, oops, we're getting a sell off. Market's going to probably come down to the 50 day. If it holds and reverses again, I might just want to take the cash in the portfolio and buy the big indexes twice the performance. Like if I buy QLD, let's say I got 20% cash and I put all of it into QLD, giving me 40% exposure to the NASDAQ 100. I'm not saying I'm going to do that, but let's say I did. That's real growth type of returns, right? The QLD, if the triple Qs take off to the upside, I don't need to own Facebook, Amazon, Google, Apple. I don't need those names. I can just own QLD, get that performance, not have to cherry pick. Not worry that the one name you buy is the one that underperforms. Because in this market, the blowups on individual names are just legendary. Right. And and so I want to avoid that risk. You know, armor report, algorithmic risk management, risk management research. How do I manage risk in a market like this? The best thing may be to have a portion of my assets. In the indexes. And so that's where my head is right now. We're going to have to see how the day plays out. So.